Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I usually get a question from my HIV patients regarding getting the vaccine or not. Is it worth it or it's not? So an interesting article came out in the open forum infectious diseases regarding outcomes of coronavirus disease among people with HIV in the US. So before I dive into the article, please don't forget to like and subscribe that button. So compared with the general population, people with HIV are presumed to be at a greater risk of severe COVID-19 and having adverse clinical outcomes secondary to them having a high burden of lifestyle associated risk factors and underlying comorbidities. HIV patients already have a very heightened systemic inflammatory state at baseline and that can potentially enhance or amplify the viral cytokine release syndrome also referred to as the cytokine storm that has been clearly linked to COVID-19. So let's get into this article. This was a retrospective study done in the US. The patients were aged more than 18 years old and seeked care in 44 healthcare centers in the US from January 1st to December 1st, 2020. So what were they looking for in this study? They were looking for rates of hospitalization, mechanical ventilation, severe disease, which included ICU admissions, and then what was the 30-day mortality. Findings of the study, there were 297,000 confirmed COVID-19 cases, out of which 0.6%, 638 people were HIV infected, with 83% or more being on HIV therapy. So here are the comparisons between the HIV and then the non-HIV people. People with HIV were more commonly younger, male, black or African-American, Hispanic, and more likely to have an underlying cardiovascular disease, obesity, diabetes, and other comorbidities. People with HIV were also significantly more likely to have a history of smoking, alcohol and drug use. People with HIV were more symptomatic at presentation, which included cough, difficulty breathing, and then having a fever. So they had a higher rate of hospitalization, 16.5% versus 7.6%. They had a higher rate of severe illness requiring ICU admissions, 4.2% versus 2.3%, and being on a mechanical ventilation, that means breathing tube. 2.4% versus 1.6%. Mortality at 30 days was actually higher among people with HIV, but actually did not attain any statistical significance. So overall, 47% were classified as having mild COVID-19, 38% of HIV patients had moderate COVID-19, and 15% had severe COVID-19. So that means the 38 and the 15 between the moderate and the severe, you had a pretty high number. So what did we learn from the study that people with HIV were more symptomatic at presentation, more likely to have severe disease, and they actually used more healthcare resources with higher rates of hospitalizations, mechanical ventilation use, and ICU admissions. So some of the reasons thought for these findings can be related to their higher prevalence of underlying comorbidities and also the possibility of the cytokine release syndrome that we talked about initially. People with HIV had a two to two and a half times or higher serum levels of what we call interleukin-6 and other cytokine, which have been very well described in causing severe disease in COVID-19. So again, big study about outcomes of COVID-19 among people with HIV in the US. Even though the mortality was not statistically significant, the severity of COVID-19 among immunocompromised patients is actually very important and something to consider about in getting the vaccine. So don't forget to subscribe and like that button.